man, you come straight out of a cone. So, Listen here, if I didn't, I I'm, I ain't gonna hold y'all. If they didn't hit me with the screener, I would not be on this episode with y'all. I had no plans on seeing this movie. I can't saw it twice. That. I can't say that. Yeah. Huh? When I saw when I saw Michael Keaton's Batman, I was like, you know what? Oh, what else? What did Ezra they gave really it to do? me in the they gave it to me in the trailers? I was okay with it. Like I literally had no interest. I, the the day that the screener came through, my brother said, "Ha ha!" I said, "Fuck! I got to see this movie now." Like I literally. Know. I was I, I was that, that against it, and then like I, here's here's the thing also that irritated me with the movie. Now that you know, now that I'm thinking about it again, if this would have been a solo movie that had no connections, I probably would have been a little bit more lenient to it. But this to me was not a good flashpoint movie at all. It didn't do anything from the comics or the or the anime, and again the connection to it and with it leading nothing. Those two really like irritate me right now with this movie that is like, it's not leading to nothing. And as a flashpoint movie from the comic standpoint, and even from the movie standpoint, it didn't follow any other themes. And I get it. I, I agree with you, Will, with this movie, that would have been way too much for them to do. But then like I said, tell us a different story. I think that this should have been a whole different story. What what would you have preferred to have been the Flash movie based off of this being in the Snyderverse and if the, and them making it as if the Snyderverse was going to continue? What did you want to see? Just kind of just like broke down, like like, like kind of like briefly from an Act One, Act Two, Act Three standpoint. What more would you? What did you want to see? Well, if they was going with this storyline, because like the beginning of the storyline and what they were trying to do, like I understood that storyline of, of dealing with his, you know, the death of his mom, trying to save his dad and everything like that. I feel like focus on that. I feel like as much as I love Zod, as much as I love that, that part didn't need to be in it. Supergirl didn't need to be in it. Make this a Flash movie. Give us the storyline of him. Yeah, dealing with his trauma, going back with past Flash, dealing with reverse Flash, like reverse Flash. I mean, you could still even have the Savitar, even him pushing him out the Chrono Bow, stopping him from going back uh, out of uh, in time. But like again, like yeah, don't make those the villains, Savitar me, and Reverse Flash, and deal with that quick. and wrap that up because like. Granted, like you have that moment of him going to try to stop the murder. That can be act one, part of act two. But then again, like CT said, at some moment you see that shadowy figure and he also has to answer the question, wait, all right, I'm I, I, not only do I want to stop this murder, but who was that that went to try to kill my mom? And how do, do now I got to stop him? Like, give us that story. I think don't incorporate Zod and all of that because... Again, even when you think about a good villain, you know, a lot of the villains that we like, Killmonger, Thanos, it posed the question, you know, of all right, was he right? Was he wrong? And even the villains who like really just take our heroes to the to the limit, you have that like, damn, yo, our people like they wasn't even going to make it. And even even though Zod technically won on this one and took them to the brinks, it didn't hit that hard because we were so in invested in more of the Flash going back in time, Savitar, the Chrono Bow, Young Flash, like the villain of of Zod. To me, I didn't get a payoff in this more than what I got out of um, Man of Steel. I'll say, one, I hate hearing niggas say didn't instead of didn't. And number two, I feel like this movie was so fire with the exception of if you want to do a Flashpoint movie. And I tell everybody this. Like, the first time I saw it, I saw it with BT. And I was like, bro, have you seen Flashpoint? And he was like, no. Nah. I was like, you have to see Flashpoint because Flashpoint is exactly what this movie should have been if you're going to... But they didn't call it Flashpoint, by the way. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't call, call it Flashpoint. It, they kept on referencing it. <laughs> Initially, they were going to call it the Flash Flashpoint because they thought that they had all the members of the Justice League, but they did not. Mm -hmm. However, in the animated series, the animated movie Flashpoint, it was done masterfully. Oh. And I wish Definitely. that the directors of DC Films would just like bar for bar do exactly what they saw in the uh in the cartoon movie and i'll tell you this why dion is a director dion i know that you do your own thing you're like no nah, man because directors want to do their own vision they don't want to just copy and paste but then you gotta remember that you're servicing fans and a you lot of these directors are not comic book fans or even fans of films. We learned that the hard way with Sam Raimi with Spider-Man 3. Just because he wasn't a fan of Venom, he didn't realize how big of an audience Venom had. So yeah. big that, in fact, uh, 15 years later, 
they've done two successful Venom films yeah. based on a hero who have never should have had his own movie. But I, I digress. So when you look at doing a uh, shot for shot, um, what do you call it? Shot for shot. Fuck it. When, when you look at doing a shot for shot film from a previous uh, medium, look at The Last of Us. Look at look at shows like The Last of Us where people praise you for doing it almost identically to the video game, yeah. and it became so successful. They're like, all right, well, shit, let's let's do this with something else. <laughs> so many things I can win. But you couldn't do that with this though. Yes, you could. But here's a few elements of why that may have dropped the ball. Give One, and like, correct me if I'm wrong. In Flashpoint, Flash already knows who Reverse Flash is, right? No. No, you're talking about in the Flashpoint, yes. Yeah. In Flashpoint, he knows that. So if you're generating that off of this, you're trying to give us a character that this dude ain't met yet. Yeah. We don't know. He doesn't know what? the history nor the hatred True. reverse Flash has for him. So now you have to try to portray all of that if you're going to go shot by shot because we haven't been introduced to him yet in Snyder's version. But, but also, it, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, but here's where you, where you can do that. So remember, one, one, one of my first criticism against this movie was that opening scene didn't hit for me, right? Mm -hmm. So you have an opening scene where you see, again, this, you, you can flex Barry's powers, but you can also see his uh, his uh, his rival right off top. Whatever they're racing to, whatever they're doing, whatever. Because, you know, Barry Allen and uh, a Reverse Flash, like, they have so many battles that that first scene can be one of their epic battles, the, the, the height of their battles, and you can get the sense of, okay, shit. Yeah. All right, reverse it's, flash, like he's different color. He's he could immediately say, reverse. I'll get you next time, Flash. Yeah. And is, then, that how is that how y'all want to introduce reverse flash like that? Well, Pete, 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 Pete. One, aside from not liking hearing niggas say didn't the wrong way, I also don't like that. This nigga deuces never uh volunteers the sword. You ever notice Will and Dion? If one of us talk at the same time as the other one, and we'll be like, Oh no, no, you go ahead. We spend like 20 seconds. No, 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 you go. This nigga deuces would be like, all right, cool. Anyway, so da, 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 this nigga never <laughs> sacrifices the fucking... Anyway, so I digress. You show <laughs> Reverse Flash in a quick battle because if you just want to introduce him and you just want to show the audience that this is who this is, you can do that. No different than if you look at, for the animated world, mm -hmm. they never showed Reverse Flash in the Justice League cartoon. In Justice League, and Justice League Doom is the first time you see the Reverse Flash. So Justice League Doom comes before Justice League Flashpoint. So in Doom, they show uh, they show the Reverse Flash getting all the heroes, uh, you know, like basically booby trapped, and yeah. then the Flash, bam! You see Reverse Flash set all this shit up. In Flashpoint, the Reverse Flash is taken out at the beginning of the movie. And yeah. then, because of this alternate reality, Barry's like, wait a minute, why do I have this reverse Flash costume? And he has to realize that the reverse Flash did this to him, yeah. has to get his powers back to try and figure this out because this, this warp timeline has been destroyed. However, with what we're pitching is a Flashpoint movie, Michael well, Keaton would have been playing... Huh? It won't happen, man. Why are we doing this? Michael well, Keaton would have been playing his father, Thomas Wayne, instead of Bruce Wayne, which would have been phenomenal. That's what I thought was going to happen. Let me just say this real quick. Let me throw these numbers out real quick. The budget of this movie was $200 million. Oh, it's a wrap. They failed. Right. They made, they made 75 nationwide. I mean, uh, national, uh, yeah, nation, nationwide. Yeah. Uh, globally, they made $139 million. Damn it. Yeah, no sequel for them. Well, hold on. You said globally, hundred. they spent $200 million, you said. To make this movie. To make it. Yes. So that means that in opening weekend, they've almost made their money back. Yeah, but they because they were only yeah, projected. On. Where, where are you getting those numbers from, Dion? I, and, and the only reason I ask is every report that I kept on saying was saying that they they lost three hundred mil. So I'm like, if they, if, well, got, I'm like, how how did they lose three hundred if they only spent two on it on it? That's you got marketing. Include, you got to include marketing, marketing, oh, and well, all of the no, all of the sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry, everything sorry. you got to send yeah. to get yeah. bitched out for other stuff. It's like, but from what you just said, Dion. Uh, I as of last night when I sent you guys the post, they had only made 55 million and they were projected to make 75 million. So, if you're saying that in the states they made 75 million 
and worldwide they made 130 and it's only opening weekend that they're going to make their money. They, 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 their goal was 265 the first weekend. Ah, all right, shit. No, nah, they're not. That's why I said there. There's no flash sequel coming because there's there's certain new stuff they need to close out, and it's just not gonna happen. Like, do y'all do y'all believe any elements from this movie James Gunn brings with? <laughs> you said brings with. Uh, well, here's the thing. James Gunn, unfortunately and unintentionally destroyed this movie and i doubt that aquaman 2's um reception will be any better james gunn literally said hey guys we're starting new yeah so when you say we're starting new me as even a casual movie goer is gonna be like oh great then i don't need to see these these three movies you got coming out yeah so but he did say that blue beetle is a part of my new dcu True. Which yeah. technically is not, but it is now. So by you saying that, that movie's going to succeed. Outside of the Latin support, it's yeah. going to succeed because you're saying this is part of your new vision. But if you're telling me, basically the world has been like, all right, well, fuck it. I don't need to get excited if I'm not going to see anybody from this movie again. But yeah. to answer your question, I believe that he doesn't take anything. Maybe Wonder Woman. Uh, Supergirl, they did say Supergirl will come back to the DC. Supergirl had a meeting oh, with the DC, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So not the Flash particular one, but like again, we're in the multiverse, right? So that is who she can still look like and yeah. be put in. So yeah. and the reason, the only reason why I floated that question, that one of the theories that I heard, and it was, it just made me think. They were saying like, when so the original version of that ending, like I said, it shows the feet, right? And there's been footage showing that Keaton shot that final scene, you know, and mm -hmm. they eventually, of course, they ended up on Clooney. And everybody was saying, why bring Clooney into this unless Clooney's going to be the one in the Brave and the Bold? They say, and then now people were saying like that we don't want Clooney to be our Brave and the Bold Batman, but like if you're going for an older Batman, you got to have an older, you know, uh, a, a older character and incredible an older actor. Bruce Wayne. Incredible huh? Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so they were saying, they was like, they was like, you know, if this is something that, you know, it, like they was, the reason why they didn't have the last 10, the, the rumor was they was trying to figure out like if they're going to connect it or not, or what the, like what the deal is with James Gunn situation. So they're saying that their theory is the whole purpose of even bringing in Clooney, which made no sense in this movie in general at first anyways, was like, all right, well, maybe Clooney might be our new Batman. So that's what I, I think like, it made perfect sense. I don't even know why that would like why they saying it don't make sense. Like again, back to the timeline thing. Time ain't linear. Oh, yeah. So no, again, Flash don't know. And then if we being honest, when he's going through the speed for Flash, don't know where the fuck he's going. If we just really <laughs> keeping it honest, he don't he'd be lucky he ends back up where he at. We just now get to see, like, oh no, that's some real shit. This dude really did not get back home, and so that was that's why I was glad it did. Like how again, back to see three. This is a love letter to Batman and Superman. Yeah, that was the perfect way to end that. If if, if you really wanted to say it was gonna be some bullshit, it'd have been bullshit if Val Kimmer would have stepped out. <laughs> that would have been some bullshit. That would have ruined this whole fucking movie. If Val Kimmer got back off. No. I'd have been hot. I'd have been hot. Nah, you know what? You know what? What, what y'all felt to, to, to talk about? Christian Bale. Nobody said that. That'd be a dope little way to kind of tie it at the end, right? Come on. Here's the thing. To, to, to Deuce's point, I wouldn't want that that Flash to have met Bale. I would have no. want a better <laughs> Flash to have met Christian Bale. Well, here's the thing. Not even a better Flash. Christopher Nolan is iconic. But what Christopher Nolan did was he single-handedly destroyed Damn. DC with that statement that he made when they did the first Batman. When he said, after Batman 1 was extremely successful, yeah. he said, Batman is the only hero in this world. Oh. Which, when he said that, that destroyed everything. Because now you show that we can't have a Robin. Yeah. Because Christian Bale said, I'm not going to do one if we got a Robin, which is crazy. And now we can't have Superman and Batman in this world because that shows things off. No yeah. matter how you feel about Michael Keaton, and I'll explain why I like Michael Keaton later. But no matter how you feel about Michael Keaton's Batman or Ben Affleck's Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman within that first scene, because he had the opening scene in Batman versus Superman. Mm -hmm. 
it showed you what kind of Batman this was going to be. Because when that movie opened, they showed Bruce having his <laughs> falling through that uh falling through the Bat Cave yep. and Bats raising him to the surface. When I saw Bats make him fly to the surface, I said, "Got it. We're no longer in reality. This is now a comic book film." <laughs> yep. Because the Christian Bale movies made you feel like, "Oh man, I don't have a billion dollars, but I I could be Batman <laughs> if I just knew how to fight." You know what I'm saying? Yep. So when you see this iteration of the flash and you see the batman that they've used mm -hmm. christian bale would not have made sense in this universe only the only people who would have made sense were all the people who played batman before christian bale and unfortunately because of val kilmer's health i'm sure he would have been a, a viable possibility because he was a better batman than george clooney but george clooney was an incredible bruce wayne yeah. however i will stand to say george clooney with who he is as an actor today and even then if he had a better director he could have given us a gritty batman he, he could have given us an oh, yeah. even more debonair bruce wayne and i think if he is the direction moving forward for an older batman bruce wayne he could be phenomenal but i only want to see michael keaton being old man bruce dealing with terry mcginnis if we yes, get that yes yes 100 percent. batman got a beard and that's the problem <laughs> when I saw that beard, I said, "Come on, man! Even even Ben Affleck shaved his shit down. Come on, man! He got stubble out here." But I'm saying though, to Clooney's point, we don't know what point in Batman he was in. So to all of them, like you said, we don't know what timeline they were, what where they were at the point. Are you ready for this? Y'all ready to get your head fucked up? Say I'm ready to get my head fucked up. Let me hear that. I'm ready to get my head I, 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 I'm gonna say I gotta go. So when you look at the end of the Flash and you see George Clooney, you know what we didn't hear is yes i'm batman that nigga said oh are you bat you're not batman and george said what are you talking about that's what he that, said he, he did, never yeah. even acknowledged I didn't that he's did. batman so if you don't acknowledge that you're batman we don't know what barry ruined in this universe he could literally just be bruce wayne and there could be another person being batman yeah and then too like what 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 did it say on his phone when he got off it said bruce wayne right it said bruce, it said bruce wayne yeah, so just like to your point, yeah, we don't. But know. also, you wouldn't save Batman's number as Batman in your phone. <laughs> That'd be wild. <laughs> hey, I mean, to, to this point, you don't know what the hell Barry going. I mean, got the he's Batman up theme up and everything him. for his ringtone. <laughs> he's pulling up on him in that incredible bends, and you think he's about to say, "Oh, you outside? All right, cool." It hangs up, and it says Batman and Bruce Wayne pull up, and people ain't gonna notice. Come on, man, Iris all in his phone. I mean, that's true. That's true. I mean, and we didn't really do a big loss with Dion Lack because he wasn't really contributing to this DC conversation. <laughs> I just want you to be. <laughs> I was like, I was like, well, the fans will catch that. But I was like, okay, yeah, I was, just, I was like, Dion I know why floating. I'm you. I was like, I know why I'm right. dutching right now. But I mean, yeah, that's fine. But me and Deuce is like, I know about the Flash, like the yeah. Flash. And if you notice, bro. And I'm honored that we were able to do this episode. But if you've noticed, I've been talking so much because I know the flag. There's a lot of stuff that I don't know, of course, because I did not read comic books like you guys. But I know a lot about the characters that I love, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's why I was like so glad that you were able to come on here. And, and it turned out the way it did Woo! because this is your space. And yeah. to be honest with you. We hadn't really got a chance since I've started the show to get a movie where you got a chance to shine like that. And so I was so glad when The Flash finally dropped it. We got to do this episode. I'm like, this will be the chance. CT really gets Whoa. to show y'all this flex of Bro, being this diehard DC character. Christopher DC. Reeves' cameo almost made me cry because the way he was introduced, he was in the shadows. Yeah. And then he landed and you like, that's Christopher, that's Christopher fucking Reeves. Christopher and Reeves. And then they threw in Supergirl because they had Supergirl in this movie. Which Yo, how she popped in, though. Was just got me. I'm like, hey, also, I ain't gonna hold you. Yeah. Um, the I'll let you you want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Even though that was spoiled, it's still, hit nuts. For me. it's still hit for it's me. I was like, nuts, yeah, nigga. <laughs> but here's the thing: that's another reason you don't watch trailers because that took the. I feel like all the excitement mm -hmm. should always go into the movie, and I'm the type of person that when I shoot trailers for something, I shoot the trailer of stuff that you're not gonna see in the movie. Right. I show like a, I remember I cut a trailer to um, I cut a trailer to something and I cut out everything good. I specifically shot scenes for a trailer. And that's what shout out to Michael Jawak. 
Michael Jai White, to get his investors for the first Black Dynamite, shot a separate teaser, right? And the teaser he shot were scenes that are not in the movie because he filmed them just for the trailer. Right. And then the movie was the movie itself. So that's the kind of thing that you want to do. If you were as a producer or a studio head or a director are trying to get people to buy into your movie, all these alternate takes that you know you're not going to use, show that in the movie. Yeah. We should have never seen Michael Keaton being in this movie. That's what would have gotten you over the $300 million mark yeah. is if you would have shown um, uh, I feel like even showing Supergirl and because of this media stuff lets you know that Henry Cavill wasn't in the movie but the things that you could have shown The Flash you also could have shown his mother you could have shown that dance you mm -hmm. could have shown uh, Iris because we knew Iris from Justice League you could have shown him uh, saving babies you could have shown a couple of, of uh, shots of that action sequence you could have yeah, also shown that, huh the Ben Affleck Batman as well, like they were showing. That could have been shown. You could have shown him. Ben Affleck's Batman. But going into this movie, knowing that Ben Affleck and Michael Keaton were in this movie, you already blew your load. Yeah, yeah and, it, you know, and because, like, it, it, even to uh, expand on what you're saying, like, we even just having him talk about having to go find a Batman, a different Batman, you could have ended right there, not without showing it, you know, and, and then that's what I found myself. I found myself like normally, normally movie studios, like I only watch the teaser trailer and I do that for the exact same reason that you said. Usually yeah. the teaser trailer doesn't give that much. So when this teaser trailer showed me Keaton, showed me Wonder Woman, I said, and showed me Affleck, I said, wait, why are they showing me everything? I'm like, I feel like... I feel like this is not a teaser. This is and a they movie. did it because I get why they did it. They did it because they know he couldn't promote the movie and yeah. they needed to get everybody in the theater. But this yeah. is what you have to remember. Movies have always been about word of mouth. Rarely is it about mm -hmm. uh, people seeing the promo because we live in a day and age where people are going to miss you being on the tonight show, or we're going to miss your appearance yeah. on Kimmel, but we will hear our friends say, yo, go see that movie. Like John wick one, didn't blow up in theaters. It blew up on demand. Mm -hmm. And nobody said any spoilers. We didn't say, oh, man. So then it's this one scene where he kills like 30 people. We say, hey, man, John Wick. It's this dude. They come and kill his dog. And you just got to go from there. Yeah. Even shorter, to have a homie zoo. John Wick? Bro. That's all you, that's all, that's all you got to do. I'm going to see it. When you hit the picture, somebody said that about The Flash. And you didn't see it. And they'd be like, yo, bro, I didn't expect that. What y'all talking about? The Flash, bro. Go see it. Bro, bro right case, now. Case in point. Remember, I told you, I was off I was off the Flash. The yeah. whole sole reason that when I was going in, I expected to be proven wrong because everybody who did was like, yo, hey, hey, the Flash, no. And so I'm like, all right, that's that's all that 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 little bit change my outlook on at least being open to this movie you know what that I'm movie blew me away bro that movie it blew me away too it I'm blew me away. away no pause i was <laughs> drained at the end of that movie because not only did i laugh i cried i was hyped there were so many moments i was jumping out of my chair for the things that i saw in that movie and if you did not feel like i felt you are waiting on a movie that is not coming brother it was, it was it, yo to this point it was a straight love letter bro like even just again i loved the storytelling because it was not too much and it was not not enough you yeah know what i'm saying like yeah. it gave me what i needed it gave me the great storyline it showed me the trials and tribulations that this new guy that has taken on the mantle of being the flash had to go through and I love how they told that story. I love how they tracked it back to where, yo, I'm not going to give you a new, new villain. I want you to see the damage of which bringing metas and aliens to this world, what the consequences were. I like that they stayed in that bubble for it yeah. and not try to give us something that we now know can't work. And this is and this is the thing where I'll say blowing their load really failed because of everything that DC has went through. And I hope James Gunn can fix that. Because right. of them not not going with their instinct and their gut. Every movie they've had came out. They always change it. We yeah. always hear about there was a different version that was supposed to come out, and it didn't come out. There's always some kind of controversy that comes when one of these movies is about to drop, whether it's from an actor doing something stupid 
or actor being treated like crap. And so we never really got a chance for this entire DCU to have itself a great run. And so I'm hoping that moving into James Gunn thing, we'll be able to get rid of that. They trust their instincts and they give us a full product that he can be proud of. I I agree completely. I feel that DC before James Gunn had all their share of controversy with not releasing things because they thought, no, we got to make it digestible. Listen, man, I know you want to fill these theaters up. I know that they're not putting these movies in the small theater with the recliner seats because they want to get as many people as they can in the big ones to sell these tickets. However, if anything, you want to know how you can make some money, fellas. I'll tell you how you can make some money. You target, you target your real fans, your diehards, and you target your casual fans. And this is how you do it. You say, damn, this movie is four hours long. We can't have that because we can't go in the theater just right. doing four or five showings a day. We need to run this shit every two hours. I want 12 showings. All right, bet. Mm -hmm. So you want to cut this movie down to two and a half hours? Yes. Shit more if we can. Done. We're going to take this four hour movie and make this shit two and a half hours. All right, bet. Now the two and a half hour movie is going to go into your big mm -hmm. 300 seat theater. But we also drop in this four hour movie with yeah. everything in it and we're dropping that shit for the diehards now we're gonna drop that four hour movie and we're gonna charge a little bit extra because if we put out a four hour movie you better make this shit worth our while you mean to tell me you don't think that the casual fans are gonna spend that little 15 dollars and the deluxe movie version uh oh. diehard fans won't spend 25 30 fuck out of here we will spend it I'm spending it to go to IMAX. Come <laughs> on. Yeah. I was in IMAX. Give That's it to I me. Say. I was yeah. going to say, I wonder why did they abandon like that thought process? I mean, director's cut, extended cuts, IMAX version. It exists yeah. for a reason. Every it's there's your people instinct. that like that, right? Instead of saying, oh, this is the sole one. We're only sticking with it. Like, embrace it. Like, yeah, we got a longer version. We can't, like, the world is smart enough. Like CT said, they're smart enough to know what you can't give us a four hour movie so instead of trying to like say oh no we're sticking with this one no like embrace it like ct said acknowledge that we got one acknowledge that we got another one like tr like the i think again like you said they're 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 trying to be multiple steps ahead in success yeah, it, yeah it's man, also too many hands it it's too it's many cooks in the kitchen yeah, they want to do this. Too many hands. i'm telling you how to run your business dc and marvel if you and I'm not talking about with every movie because I'm not about yeah. to watch a four hour cut, even if I'm a dead, even if I'm a diehard fan of the uh, Captain Marvel, I'm not <laughs> watching her <laughs> for oh, four dude. hours. Oh, dude. But when you have a character like an Iron Man, yeah. or you have a character like Spider Man, or you go back to DC and you got Batman and Superman, and we know and trust this director, and we know and love this actor, and we know and love this writer, we're going to watch a four-hour movie. Now, yeah. I'm saying that as somebody who will watch a movie four hours of somebody of a character I love, but I know people who will not watch that movie. So if you have the people, first of all, theaters, you have screens. Yeah. Big movies usually get three to 6,000 screens across the world or across the country, depending on your deal, okay? Now, if you have 3,000 screens and you have 3,000 screens of The Flash right now, if you have 3,000 screens and you're not making the money that you want to make off this because there are a lot of people who have the uh, there's a lot of bad press associated to this movie with the character that is the lead. And there is a lot, a lot of stuff that you had to cut out of this movie. If you were to take those 3,000 screens and you know you didn't make your money back or you know you're not going to make as much money as you should, what's the harm in out of the 3,000 screens you already have showing 1,500 screens having the four-hour version and the other 1,500 having the two-and-a-half-hour version? I guarantee you would have made your fucking money because the people who are the diehards would pay the money. We already watch, we'll binge watch a 10-episode show yeah. in a day. Yeah. We'll watch a four hour movie if we truly love the character. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the big things, too, that hopefully they'll be able to fix, and I know it's still, they're still trying to find that medium, is you have to stop letting these brands and sponsors dictate the full movie where it takes away your point and your artistic view. 
Because yes. I think that was another thing DC had a problem with. You had way too many cooks in the kitchen and telling you, oh, well, we don't think that this is going to be too fitting for the audience. We want to give our money to for you to make this move. And it's like, yeah, but we are guaranteed that these fans are going to go see this. Like, this is what they want. Like, even to, again, to CT's point, if you go watch this cartoon, we literally just got to make this live action and they'll go see it. And we will make all of our money back. And it's like, yes. yeah, but I don't, I don't know. I think yeah. Do. It's a, it's that balance of trying to figure out if like, cause I get it. You can't listen to the audience always, but we've had some examples. We're listening to the audience always like the, the help out. We got a whole new Sonic when they gave us ugly Sonic because of the fans saying that the Snyderverse was a success that cost what well, wasn't like what 200 extra mil to, to reshoot all of that or some shit like that. Like I think it was 20 that, million. Oh, 20, yeah, 20 I, million I, to I, add the extra stuff. Did add the extra stuff, but it was still a success on the streaming service. It's like, there's certain points where you got to trust. I, I'm hoping. And like I said, I am praying James Gunn has, has garnered enough respect that they're like, you know what? Let's just see what James Gunn, let's, let's trust in him. And him and his vision, and let's not put our hands in it like we normally do. I like I'm just praying that they they give him that respect for allow him to to cook. We gonna see, man. But let me get y'all final thoughts on, on on the Flash and just from from what we know with this final chapter closing out for the Snyderverse, everything that they've done. Would you would you would you say? That was a good send off for that. Like, especially with all the controversy that's happening, everything that's going on. Can you say that? Hey, like, if, if we were supposed to put a bow on this, and we go, we go outside of Aquaman too, because yeah, we just already know. Would this have been a good end and a good ribbon to tie everything up for them? Okay, because uh, I know CT gonna go in because you know this, this, this is. Like, let me just go real quick. All right, so I this is this has been my final stance on it. This is what that I've been taking. I said, if you like Ezra Miller's Flash from Justice League, you are going to like this movie, right? I was like, no matter what, like I said, what I was already out of because I didn't like his portrayal of, of, of Barry Allen and Flash. So if you did like that from Justice League, this is more of that and a little bit better, and you're going to like this movie. I do agree with CT's main point, as this is a love letter to Batman's and Superman. And because of that, like it's a bow for that. But as a Flash movie, I 100% don't like it. <laughs> All like <right>. Deuces. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is you are the stepson that this nigga is trying his best to win you over. He's thinking of cooking <laughs> for ice cream. He done told your mama how impressed by your drawings he is. He's bought you shit for your birthday. <laughs> And none of what he does <laughs> is going to make you call him dad. You are a tough step kid. Um, for me, this was the movie that should have come out after Aquaman. So we could have truly said goodbye. Uh, the fact that they pushed Aquaman to December, crazy to me. Aquaman should always come out in the summer because it's Aqua is water. People think of water and fun. And it's, you got to think about marketing. These people, man. Anyway, Aquaman should have been before the Flash. And the Flash should have been the goodbye to the old Snyderverse. Because of this, the changes that we're about to go through, it's better to leave fans getting uh, less attached than we were before. So this would have been a good goodbye. Uh Ezra Miller's troubles could have been cleared up publicly by him doing press. And what I mean is, yes, these smaller reporters are going to try and push the envelope and try to ask you, hey, they said I can't ask you about this, but I'm on my Robert Downey Jr. Uh, inappropriate question tour. So, hey, man, what's going on with the girl that you choked in Hawaii? Hey, hey, get the fuck out of here, right? Those guys are going to do that all day long. But yeah. Jimmy Kimmel, uh, Jimmy Fallon, yeah, Seth Myers. These guys are not going to do that because yeah. their shows are contingent upon these super big guests. And if yeah. they were to blindside somebody, they wouldn't get any more guests. So they wouldn't ask him about that kind of stuff. So the fact that you didn't even let him promote it shows that 
you're really putting the cart before the horse and thinking this movie is going to make all of this bread back for you not to be able to have to promote it. I'm sorry. The original question is moving forward. Was this the movie? <sighs> moving forward? No, because as great as a job as he did, which was an Oscar worthy performance, if I could be honest, I hope they allow him to be the flash moving forward, but this is the part of the game where I can honestly admit, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I respect that. I yeah, respect okay. that. Uh, I respect that. Yeah. I'm actually um, surprised. I ain't going to hold you because of how much you liked it, but I respect your thought process into it and everything. Like that's the one thing about these conversations, why this collective of us work so well is that we don't really rarely re react off of emotion. There's mm -hmm. always a thought process to it and your thought process to it. Like I said, it may out of everybody that I listened to you were the first person to successfully make me look at this movie a little bit different and give it a little bit more flat. Incredible. I mean, uh, movie. Flat. Sorry about that. Incredible movie, bro. It's just sometimes the audience will show you that they can't separate the art from the artist. Yeah, Like, I love The Flash. I have no business knowing anything about Ezra Miller's personal life. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm talking about Barry Allen and The Flash. Yeah. This movie gave me my Batman back. Michael Keaton. Oh, let me say that. I'm sorry. Michael Keaton is an amazing, is the best Batman for a number of reasons. Number yes. one, he's the first Batman that had believable fight scenes. Okay? In Batman 1 and Batman Returns, that was epic fight choreography for that time period. So you got that, and it stepped away from the cartoon, even though it was very cartoonish when we look at 30 years later. But mm -hmm. for that time period, that was an extremely dark take on Batman because the Batman before that was Adam West. Yep. And there was another brother in the 30s. Exactly. He's dancing, doing that <laughs> bullshit. He had a blue and cream. It was just a weird ass outfit. Hey, not going to lie, though, would not mind seeing a Batman comedy like that come back now. You out of control. So. Bro. Batman shows right now. It'd be weird to give go back to campy Batman. It would. Yeah, I would love. I think that's perfect. Like a thirty minute comedy of Bat the spoofed Batman. Like I think that'd be great. I'd be anyway, great uh, <laughs> so Michael Keaton was the first dark Batman. Right, we got a chance to see a brooding Batman. We got a chance to see how he truly thought. We got a chance to see an intelligent detective, and we got a chance to see a human. He wasn't so dark that he was cold, right? Yeah. Like Ben Affleck's Batman had gotten to a point where he was cold with cold. criminals. He was yeah. branding. Branding. <laughs> That's something that even Christian Bale didn't do. So again, yeah. if, if Ben Affleck had had his solo Batman film, he would be my number two Batman. But I rank my Batmans based on what they've done for my lifetime as yeah. far as changing my culture. And for well over a decade, Michael Keaton was the standard. He was uh, he was somebody that we had to compare Val Kilmer and George Clooney to. And it took Val Kilmer and George Clooney to make one Batman to be even contestable to Michael Keaton. And Michael Keaton isn't even six feet tall. That's how amazing he was as Batman. He had the world saying he's going to be a horrible Batman. And 30 years later, he's still relevant as the portrayal of Batman that he had. In yeah. comparison to Val Kilmer, who was an amazing Batman, horrible Bruce Wayne, and George Clooney, amazing Bruce Wayne, horrible Batman. Yeah. So Christian Bale, he gave us an okay Bruce Wayne, a great Batman, and Ben Affleck gave us an incredible both. Yep. That's why so, he's my number two. Michael Keaton, dude, to see him I be able to have him. update and fighting scenes yeah. and to see him uh, soaring through the sky. Uh, that, made him number, that made him number one, bro. And that being cool as fuck, like cool him to say, yeah, yeah, I'm oh, Batman. Man. They'll say, the, let's yeah. get nuts. You want to get nuts? Because these are iconic things that he did, bro. Yeah. Yeah. But they, then to see uh, it with the CGI, too, that you have today to get him, like when he was fighting the Kryptonians and stuff, mm -hmm. I was like, yo. This is what he didn't have when Tim Burton shot it. And this yeah. is why it may, even for myself, was like, okay, he's number one again. Like, I, I had him and Ben Sherry. I was like, no, Keaton just showed why yeah. he is that dude bro, when it comes bro, to Batman. Bro, Keaton, 
the thought of Keaton playing old man Bruce was so was so big and so like like amazingly dope. Like when I saw him as Vulture, I was like, dog, please get him back as old man Bruce because like what he was doing with Vulture was like I like I'm like I liked that portrayal. I I just started mm-hmm. seeing old man Bruce and I'm like 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 CT said, no, yeah. we get be- Batman Beyond Terry McGinnis. It's like oh my god. Yeah. And here's the thing, I'll give you this, bro. Michael Keaton, and this is what I love about him. He wants to play Batman. My beef with uh, Christian Bale, my beef even a little with Affleck. These are guys that play Batman well, but there were other interests within it. So Ben Affleck came on because he was promised he'd be able to direct yeah. the Batman movie that he was going to do. Once that was taken away, he's like, all right, well, fuck it. I don't want to fucking do this. Yeah. Michael Keaton is like, hey, I am Batman. I want to play. Ba-. He agreed to do it in the Batgirl movie. They took right. it away from him. <laughs> Yo, CT, I don't know why I just picture uh, Michael Keaton calling them and they saying, yeah, man, he, he backed out. Want some help? I love that I am Batman is canon in every universe. Every remember universe. When, he was, when Barry was trying to find out, he was like, we yep. ain't got no Batman in the latest shoe. Like, I am Batman. I hey, am why do you say that? Why you say that? <laughs> like, why do you say that? that? Like, Dude, that Michael Keaton is iconic to me. Yeah. Um, his color scheme is exactly why oh, my color God. scheme. You look at this room right now. You see this yellow curtain. You see the mm-hmm. black next to it. Yeah. I adopted black and yellow because of Michael Keaton's Batman. No other Batman has had a theme song. Oh, my and God. that's the problem. Yeah, Christian so Bale's dumb. Batman yeah. had this weird ass sound that Hans mm-hmm. Zimmer came up with. Uh, my guy to this day is still the dude that created the Batman cartoon theme song, which is yeah. the same guy, Danny Elfman, who did the cartoon theme song, which was a derivative from Michael Keaton's Batman. Dude, That's no, my I, I, didn't know, I didn't know that. I didn't know it was inspired by that. Yeah. Yeah, it it's, makes sense because, yeah, the cartoon, yeah, it makes sense though because I always don't know why I kept mixing them up. Like, yo, the movie dropped way before yeah. the cartoon mm-hmm. was made. I was like, yeah. And here's my beef, bro. When we talk about the Snyderverse, First of all, shout out to Zack Snyder for, yes, his completely different version and vision for DC. But shout out to him for at least having a plan. Yeah, We can always get mad at somebody for them not doing their plan correctly or uh, hitting the marks that we expect it to hit. But I salute him for having a plan because DC for so long did not have a plan. They were just throwing things against the wall. The fact that we had a Jonah Hex movie. They could kiss my ass. The fact <laughs> that we had a Catwoman movie, they could kiss my ass right after I get off the toilet. You understand me? But Bro, the fact that, that Snyder... Is, that, wait, wait, hold on. Because <laughs> that Catwoman movie, the again, he goes into directing. Like, the liberties that they took to the story. Like, wait, what are you doing with this story? <laughs> they thought people were paying attention. Yeah, and they go back to not being a fan, not really knowing who Catwoman yeah. is, and it's like, oh, so she's a Catwoman. That means she got cat powers. No, Nick, no, stop. You already going in the wrong direction. Before wrong. You hit, before you even start, no. And that's and that was the problem. So that was the whole problem. So when you look at Zack Snyder, he had a plan. Yeah. His plan was a very different take on the Justice League, even being the Justice League, because as yeah. I said, you can't have a Justice League without the Green Lantern, and he somehow tried to do that. Mm-hmm. So when we look at Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton loves playing Batman. Love He's him. the one who put the role on the map and he had a theme song, just like Superman had a theme song. But my only gripe with Zack Snyder's Snyder verse is that Batman nor Superman had their theme songs in this Ooh, universe. Yeah. And yeah, that's right. what always yeah. pissed me off. No matter yeah. how much I liked uh, Ben Affleck, I'm like, if he would have had the Keaton theme song, I would be with it. And that Keaton theme yeah. song was all through this Flash movie. Oh yeah. So this is part of the love letter. And Dang it, to your fact, only so only Wonder Woman got her own shit. Yep. Yep, she got her, and then that's and what's crazy is Marvel has shown us multiple times that like, it doesn't even have to be the exact thing on. It doesn't no. even have to be the full. It can be one chord bed, like you know what I'm saying. Like one of the things that in Miss uh in Miss Marvel when yep. they did that little bit of that, like, it, it added so much to that that it scene. changed the entire movie because people were talking yeah. about. Did you hear the music? So to let you <laughs> yeah. know, audiences listen to music, and I'll tell you even more of why it's so disrespectful that Andy didn't 
give a nod to Grant Gustin at all is because you used Grant Gustin's Professor Zoom, a.k.a. Jay Garrick on that show, yeah. stock footage, but you didn't use Grant Gustin's Flash and you stole Grant Gustin's Flash background music. Yes, I heard that in yeah. there and I was Come like, on. wait a minute. Like you just gonna y'all gonna adapt his stuff, add a little more horns and shit. <laughs> they like, stole everything. You not even show him. Didn't even show was, him, bro. Like, and wrong, bro. and I'm gonna praise this black queen, Candace Patton. <sighs> Candace Patton was so amazing as Iris West yeah. that the young lady that was in this film. Again, I'm gonna defend the young lady that was in this movie by saying, uh, Kiersey yeah. Clemens. Yep. I'm gonna defend her by saying clearly all of her scenes were rearranged yeah because the way that they portrayed this sister doing that role did not do her justice but candace Patton, i know she took a lot of bullshit from doing that tv show yeah. and let me tell you something the way her acting was on screen for those past nine seasons i applaud you yes mm -hmm. you did a phenomenal job and i wish they could use her yeah but 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 you know what though to that point if we're looking at it how they're paired Iris complimented Grant well. Yes. And yeah, yeah, believe, yeah. Somebody said I heard that. And too. I believe this Iris would have complimented him well because both of them are like both of them are weirdos. And that's what you yeah. get off of. Y'all both weirdos. Like Iris isn't this glorified journalist like that. Like she is kind of in that B tier list thing. And that's what I was getting off of them. It's just the point is like you missed the key thing, which there is an undeniable love these two have for one another. And y'all didn't give us that. But yeah, also, if you're going to show Iris in this film, give me one scene to make her come up and ask uh, Barry that weird-ass question about his parents. And he's like, what? No, my dad is innocent. What are you talking about? For her to have said that, she's like, no, I'm sorry. I just meant it would have been great for her to have been at her newspaper yeah. And she's not the head of it yet. And her boss says, hey, don't you know that uh, that Barry Allen kid? That's yeah. this guy's son. Yeah, but, you know, he's grieving. He doesn't. Hey, you're a journalist. Go ask now, the journalist questions. He killed his he, mother. Find out why. And even to that point where if you really want to add some more emphasis to her, he could have asked. She could ask him about the flash. Be like, yo, have you heard? And then this way you could have paid not. Have you heard of this? Uh, this dude that's been running around. He's kind of like a scarlet speedster. And stuff. That's kind of just one of the names. Well, but they this, in, in this universe, I think he's already established. Remember, he has some fangirls. On oh the yeah, because they did call him the yeah, Flash. They called so him the right. Flash. So him he's the flash. not even a blur. Like the, the 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 world knows this Flash is here. Uh, CT, because you talked about it earlier. Wait, before you say it, this is what you could have done to your point from earlier for establishing him as truly the Flash. Give me a reshot version. Or no, you know what? You don't even have to reshoot that. I'm talking about when Captain Boomerang was on the Suicide Squad. Oh, Do yeah. this for me. Show him putting away two minor uh, villains from his rogues gallery yeah. on yeah. his way to stopping uh, those babies from dying in that hospital. Ooh, yeah. even connected more, CT. He yep. drops off Boomerang, walks by, and Amanda Wall is right there. Come on. Come yeah. on. And now yeah. we know why, but why he was back in the Suicide Squad for the second one. Give it to me, uh, this is what you're about to say. I'm gonna ask a question because you had said, like, you know, you hope that they drop the director's cut or whatever. Did they like, did is has there been any news about like what, like, what was cut off or anything? Because again, like, to the iris, like, th that that actress is such a dope ass actress for the fact that y'all gave her no room. Like, I'm hoping that there's some scenes on the cutting floor that we at least we, see. I'm gonna we tell you know something. Henry Cavill is supposed to uh, have had a cameo in there. And that's why I'm glad they at least kept his uh, 3D CG. Mm -hmm. Because them not having him in the movie at all was a disservice. And a slap in the face to what he's contributed. Another actor who wanted Boy, to play wanted. the character. Uh. Um, I was at a friend's house and Kiersey Clemens was there. I'm not going to say the friend. I was at a friend's house. Kiersey Clemens was there. And I say this to say, actors know when you're cut out of something. Yeah, mm -hmm. we know when something is boiled down and destroyed, and that's what that sister had on her face. To give you an, a further example, Deuces and Will, um, I was on a TV show, and the TV show, one of the network executives was there. I had a kissing scene. This kissing scene between myself and this actress was 
Oh, phenomenal. Okay. And I'm not saying that because she's an incredible actor. I'm just saying like the chemistry we had for this particular scene was phenomenal. The yeah, network. Huh? I'll say y'all did y'all thing. Yeah, we did our thing. The network executive came over and was like, um, yeah, it's not supposed to be as like, you know, like passionate. Can you guys just do like, like a peck like, like this? And we were both like, but the, the scene was perfect. It was fine. And whenever they come and ask you to do a different version or another take, please remember that that's the take they're going to use. This was something that I learned as an actor that I will never do again if I'm happy with what I did. Mm -hmm. So we had done the scene the way that they that she had wanted. She's like, just try it like this. And we were like, oh, God. So we did it like that. When I saw the episode, that's the take they used, right? Uh, okay. After that, I shot a, a drama series where I had played the character extremely like serious, and it was perfect and i'm not saying it because it was my performance it just felt right for the scene the director comes and was like yeah let's do it a little more silly and i'm like this is a fucking drama why do i have right. to do it silly just because i'm a comedian outside of these walls let's just do it serious yeah just just, just do one little oh god i do the silly take mm -hmm. that's the take that made it to television now to get back to my original point when i saw clear seat at that house i say yo congratulations this is gonna be phenomenal she was like mm -hmm, thank thank you and i was like huh i wonder what that's about and then now that i see the movie <laughs> oh, i oh. know what that was about yeah that's what that face was for it. yeah was because weird. actors be knowing and that's why i'm not going hard on this sister uh, also just because we don't destroy our black queen oh yeah, yeah no no we're definitely not going hard on her at all never but she knew that yeah. they had cut her dramatically down yeah, and that's that's the unfortunate part of it. I would have rather she wasn't in this movie to set her up for the next one, yeah. or even at the end of the movie when he goes to the courthouse and he's like, "My dad is free." He could have been passing the little coffee stand, and she's right there, and he looks at her, and he's like, "Hot!" And then his phone rings. Oh, and his phone rings. He looks up. She's walked away, and he's like, "Fuck, uh, Bruce, listen, man." And then bam. Yeah, or even too, you could have yelled, had that yell out, uh, coffee for uh, Iris or coffee for what for Miss West, and then like, he turns around, like, yeah, and the yeah. you know what I mean, like you just said, and it, it's that, yeah. I'm tired of fixing movies on this show, man. They need, they need to <laughs> the shit. but but with all the but y'all saying that, that even comes to my thing of like the question I asked. I think because of them having this movie for James Gunn's sake. This is a great way for you to completely wipe your slate clean. This movie gave us everything from what they were trying to do, what they had done, and even what people who, it, you know, outside of DCU had done. You've given us everything in the DC live action history. For James Gunn, don't bring none of that shit up no more. Pay, create your own lane now. We don't need no homages. Yeah. We don't need no multiversal yeah. stuff. Start where your point is where you want to start. Brave in the boat. We don't need nothing from these past things. You've given us everything. You're right. Start yeah. your new legacy with what you're doing now. And, and that's what's so it. beautiful because with this film, they have gotten all the homages out the way. Well, with the exception of Grant Gustin, which I think for me, the Arrowverse in general. They did it should be and they they did all of their homages as well but i'm somebody that okay deuces you know this because it's, it's geek set y'all are pretty much dip set but for nerds <laughs> it means that you're a fan of cameron and the rest of those guys so you and bt kingsley would be best friends but as a leader to be a good leader you don't have to pat the heads and rub the backs of all of your teammates. Right. But what you do have to do is acknowledge them and show them how much you appreciate their hard work. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you don't have to do that by coddling them, but sometimes it could just be a, Hey, great job with that. I was, I was really blown away. And those teammates of yours will text you the next day. Hey man, thank you so much for saying that. Or, Hey, did you see when I did that one thing that was for you? Right. Yeah. Yep. With, the Arrowverse, I feel like all of those actors deserve that at a boy or at yeah. a girl because yeah. they've held us down since 2012 yeah, and they've right. never gotten any type of acknowledgement or any thank you. 
No. Nothing, bro. Well, you getting it here, yo, to all of y'all in the Arrowverse, yeah, yeah. man. Thank you for holding us down. All of you that, matter of fact, not even just the Arrowverse, from the Titans, yeah. to Doom Patrol, all of you that made DC come to life on television, thank you so much. Yeah, and you, you should have gotten your flowers in the Flash movie, even yeah. if it was just two seconds of it because y'all did some groundbreaking stuff they did. that I think would have opened that opened the door for DC to even want to make the jump into live action because y'all held it down. And shout out to Dean fucking Kane. Shout out to Dean Kane. <laughs> Dean Kane. Put some respect uh, on his name. Put some respect on him, bro. Dean Kane got us through some times I'm that we didn't even awesome. know if we were going to have superhero shows. Dean Kane Superman <laughs> came at a time where there was no superhero television, bro. Superman was the only game on television. Bro. Hold it down. I'm Hold talking about against down. top tier sitcoms. Like, yo, this bro. is when, like, yo, On a Sunday on night, 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 yeah. Bro. Bro. Come on. Bro, the way the way that people talk about like power and succession, like yeah. that was like, and it, it, remember at that time also nerd culture wasn't as popping as it was no. now. So it was a very small compartment. So you had your crew like, hey, you watch it, you watch it, like it was so. Yeah, and since we're on the time. subject, bro, Dean Kane, I'm also going to mention Tom Welling. Yes. Yeah. Tom Welling did not get a chance to play Superman in the sense that we wanted to see him, but Tom Welling was the only Clark Kent we had after Dean Kane's show went off the air. And yeah. Dean Kane, I'm sorry, uh, Tom Welling was handed that baton by Christopher Reeves because Christopher Reeves did several guest appearances on Smallville. And I got a shout out the greatest Lex Luthor of all time, and also the greatest Wally West of all time, Flash. Michael Rosenbaum, bro. Yeah. yeah. If it was not for these guys holding down the fort, we wouldn't have an Arrowverse. We wouldn't have such a resurgence in superhero films that we see now because there were no other live action shows that had succeeded. Mutant X was a far cry for what they wanted it to be. <laughs> Yeah, I'm telling right. you, bro. Yes, Smallville, right. then the Arrowverse, and the Arrowverse became the Flashverse, and yeah. you know that went away. But thank you guys so much for everything that y'all did. Yeah, man, y'all really gave it to us, bro. Yo, but as y'all can see, this has been a super episode, and I couldn't yeah. ask for nothing better, man. We almost knocking on three hours, and that's a good thing. It's like we said, bro. We 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 don't really get a chance to talk about DC, so I'm thanks. CT got a chance to shine and something that he absolutely loves. And we're going to be getting more of it now with James Gunn coming in and being able to start this entire DCU over. And, you know, hopefully yeah. in compare, you know, if you don't want to compare it, but to compare it, hopefully he gives us something as just as well as they've given us with the DC animated show, uh, TV, uh, I mean, movies, excuse me. Oh, yeah. And so, I think so. the first thing up in movie wise is uh, Blue Beetle. And then we got Aquaman before the end of the year. And then in 2025, we got Superman. But he said the Amanda Waller show is first. And then we go straight oh, into okay. Superman. And then they just say, like, Peacemaker is about to start production as well. Well, Peacemaker comes that. after Superman. So he okay. said the Amanda Waller show, which is pretty much the entire cast of Peacemaker, will be in the Amanda Waller show, okay. then yeah. Superman, then Peacekeeper season two. Yeah, yeah, that's the headline I read. It's after yeah. Superman. That's what But I Comic Con comes up in a couple of weeks and we will be able to see who is playing Superman and who's playing Lois Lane and Lex Luthor. Hopefully oh, oh, it is Miss Maisel playing Lois Lane because she has been Lois Lane without even trying and she would be my number two after Erica Durant's. Okay. Man, I hope it's not Beast playing of uh, uh, Superman. No, no offense, but I'm just he like, would be a great Lex Luthor. Just shave that head; the hairline already gone. That's no who I want him as, like Lex yeah. Luthor. Uh, so hopefully, I'm like, I don't know who's gonna be Superman, but um, I'm believing in James Gunn, man, to take Guardians the way he took it. Man, I'm just like he took a property we didn't care about. I didn't know anything about Guardians, and he made me care. Right. Yeah, I only knew Star Lord, and that was because of Nova, and that was really it. I'll I knew about you. Rocket Raccoon, and that was only because of uh Capcom versus Marvel. Yeah, and see, I was just about to say uh, that's the exact same reason. Yeah, because Sworn he was just in the video games, didn't even know he was in comics. <laughs> like had no so, idea. And then you had Bradley right. Cooper. So now knowing that James Gunn, the characters from Guardians of the Galaxy, and the I'm sorry, the actors from Guardians of the Galaxy will follow James Gunn to the end of the world. We know that almost all the Guardians will be in the new DC. So I'm telling you right now, 
Bradley Cooper for Hal Jordan. Bam. I said it. I meant it. Bradley Cooper for Hal that. Jordan. Hey, hey, and if we doing that, Batista for Lobo. Oh, the big guy. Ooh. Come on, man. Batista. The main Lobo. man. Yeah. I can, bro, I cannot wait till we get Lobos, bro. I, I love Lobos as a character so much, bro. <laughs> yeah. If they don't give it to Jason Momoa, if they don't give it to him, like, I would love to see Batista play. They're him. not going to give it to him because I remember James Gunn said, uh, yeah. we're not going to have people play multiple characters yeah. in DC. Oh, okay. So that rumor is they can yeah, they, they clear that. that. Yeah, he cleared when, that up when, quick. When he, before James Gunn started, like, replying to people on Twitter, yeah. he thought we we was on the, oh, Jason Momoa may play it. But once he started replying to people on Twitter, he was he was killing all that shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, he killed nah, everything. Nah, nah. Yeah, he's done. He's playing yeah. fish, and that's it. <laughs> Who could Michael Rooker play in DC? Ooh. Villain or hero? Who could he play? Whoa, wait, 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 wait. Who did he play in uh, Guardians? Guardians. He was uh the guy with the with the Yandu. Yandu. He played Yandu. He, already, he played it in Suicide Squad though. Oh, he was oh, a Suicide he Squad. He was a Suicide Squad. And he, he died though, didn't he? Him. Yeah, he died. Yeah. Him. Well, we know Nathan Fillion did not die in Suicide Squad. Yeah, we'll say that. We'll say that. We'll yeah. Say that. No, so, no, 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 no. Well, no, never mind. The suit, the people clicked deceased on the screen. But again, we didn't see him die. And then we saw Weasel wasn't dead either. So Yeah, Weasel was alive. Dead. And Weasel is Sean Gunn. <laughs> so we got our first confirmation of who's in the DC universe. Oh, well, he's Calendar Man, too. Sean Gunn? Yeah. Remember Did not know that. Prison? He was in the prison. He was talking. Hey, you stupid idiot. He was making fun of uh, Polka Dot Man. That was yeah. oh. and he was Calendar Man because he had all the numbers right there. That's what made me know he was Calendar Man. You're he right. Has all the numbers right there on his forehead. And yeah. I was like, okay. And he said, we're not getting a Suicide Squad 3. I can see that. Yeah. I feel like he revived it. Let's move on. Yeah. Um, he, sa- he he saved it and gave it what it needed to be, and I'm yeah. okay with that. Like to your point that you've always said a long time too. Like I don't need the focus to be on the villains. Nah, and give I'm me the glad. heroes first. Yeah, sure. the hero, the, first of all, Suicide Squad was another misstep from DC because they had so many more. Every character in the Justice League should have had should have been on their sequel yeah. by the time a Suicide Squad even was thought of. So by the time Suicide Squad came out, their number three movie should have been on the rise so that all of their characters. That's one brilliant thing that I'll say about DC television before they, uh, you know, got went too far was that they introduced a lot of their villains and they brought them back multiple times. And then they were like, you know what? Let's give them this spinoff show because we love these actors so much. Yeah, that's the thing that DC films should have done. Like, all right, let's introduce these characters and now let's create the Suicide Squad with the characters that we already love instead of always being in the origin story space. Yeah. Or always try, or how they did try to focus on making a woman lead too hard. You did oh. that with one, you did that with Wonder Woman. That was why it didn't come together the way it should have been, because you were trying to Yay! It goes back, it goes back to what y'all said. Stop trying to check off the boxes. Yeah, you're yes. trying to check out so many boxes, man. When you make a mm-hmm. character to this day. I praise the movie Salt with Angelina Jolie. To this Holy day, God. I praise Atomic Blonde with Charlize Theron. Like, I praise these movies because these are films. I praise Wonder Woman 1 because these are films where women are leading them. Yep. And they're just great movies. They don't have this agenda. They're not trying to check off boxes. They just made a great movie yeah. that happened to check off boxes. Yeah. Don't go into a movie saying we need to check off boxes before we make this script. Just make the script, and then if it happens to check off boxes, you're gonna win even more. And that's why the Suicide Squad didn't make it because you wanted to push Harley Quinn too hard. Yeah. Too hard. And it was like, yo, you should have let her like how it was in the comic. Mm-hmm. It allowed us to make her a favorite yeah. because of what it was. Here, you're trying to force us to make this live action vervet the favorite, and it's like you don't have to do that. At Let's all. just make her a star. Let's just give her her own movie. It's like, that's not... Out of, and then, yeah. even in that, you're giving another origin story yeah. of these other people, and it's like you're introducing people instead of... Like, in James Gunn... I mean, um, in Zack Snyder's universe, all these heroes just existed. So that meant all these villains just existed. You can't do that. You have to introduce people, and especially you have to introduce these villains. So there's no way you show me 
Black Canary, and she's just been around for years. And we didn't see her anytime before that. And for you to do the Justice League movie, uh, I believe Justice League came out after the emancipation of Harley Quinn, right? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. no, you're right. The Snyder came out after that. So if you do that, how do you not show Black Canary, a hero with meta powers, helping the Justice League? Yeah. Or any mention of her before then. And then it just doesn't make sense. And how do you make the Joker an afterthought? And how does the Black Canary exist and a Green Arrow doesn't? What are we? What are we yes, doing? <laughs> what are we yeah, doing? Because I, I was just like, "Yo, so where's Ollie?" As soon as I saw her, I was like, "So where's Ollie?" Ollie Ollie's here. And then even to to that point, you mention a uh, Sionis building, but you don't mention Queen Industries. Come on, man! Like that's nowhere around to be his competing thing. Like you could have easily threw that in there and stuff like that. There are too many billionaires in the the DC comic world for you not to show them. Thank God Ted Cord is going to be mentioned in Blue Beetle. Yeah. I mean, come on. What are we talking about? Yeah. So it's right, we got to get out. I see dudes yeah, looking at yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going to be yeah. you first and say, all right, I got to get out of here. No, no, no. Today I was literally free. <laughs> I have nothing to do. He was like, I got time today. So. Got no, nah, my daughter, yeah. I got to take her to, I got to take her to dance class. My daughter keep on texting me. <laughs> yeah, it's your you daughter's ready? dance class, huh? <laughs> oh, you got to take my daughter's dance class. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the hip hop aerobics ain't going to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> Great episode, <laughs> y'all. Yeah, and I love so, it. ladies and gentlemen, thank you for checking out another episode of Straight Out of the Comic Book. Let us know in the comments below what do you rate the Flash movie from a scale of one to ten. If it's anything below five, don't comment at all. Y'all know how this goes. I've been your host, Will Farrow. Uh, thank CT and Deuces and Dion for contributing absolutely nothing to this episode. <laughs> glad he showed up. Oh, oh <laughs> glad he showed up. <laughs> and shout out to all of y'all, man. Like, subscribe, uh, turn on your notifications to the channel, and we will catch y'all next time. Hey.